You're listening to Inside iOS Dev, show about real-world iOS development. Today with you, your host, Alex Bush. And today I'm going to talk about system design interview. So what is system design interview? System design interview is usually uh, the last interview that you'll have as you're uh, applying interviewing for an iOS position. Uh, typically, it might not be a dedicated interview necessarily. It depends on the company and its size. Uh, but usually if it's a large organization, you'll have, well, a standalone interview just about system design. And in smaller companies, uh, they kind of mesh it in, uh, together with, with with your other iOS interviews. But typically, what uh, what do they ask, right? Like, what, what does it mean, system design interview? Well, <laughs> as the name implies... Uh, the interviewer wants to know, wants to gauge your knowledge of designing systems. And in case of iOS, most of the time, what they will ask you, what that means, that they'll ask you how to design a particular applica- type of application. And it usually depends on, you know, what company you apply for. Let's say you apply for an e-commerce company. They'll probably ask you how to build an e-commerce app and design it. Or you're applying for a social networking company like Facebook or something like that. Uh, they will probably ask you how to build an Instagram app or how to how to build a Facebook app or a messenger or something like that. So basically, it depends on, on the type of product they're uh, working on, right? And throughout your interview, you'll be whiteboarding your design and basically drawing a bunch of diagrams. You usually have uh, probably about 45 minutes to an hour for to design a system. So usually what, what that means, they will not ask you to design the entire application. They'll probably focus only on one particular part of the app, the, the, the most important killer feature, right? Or the most important part of the application. So let's say if it's an, if it's an e-commerce uh, company, they will likely ask you to design a product screen. Product screens usually the most complex and the most important part of uh, any successful e-commerce app. As as you know, as the company scales, right, and the more features they build, the more complexity goes into that. Uh, screen because that's the money maker, right? When people land on that screen, if it doesn't work or it's not uh, designed well or it's not performing well, well, users will will just bounce and drop off, right, and uh, not make a purchase. So typically, think of a, a product details product screen. Uh, just well, you know, I guess the the easiest example would be um, Amazon app, right? Amazon uh, iOS application. When you tap on a product anywhere in the app, you get to that product screen. So if you look at it, right, uh, it consists of a lot of a lot of different uh, moving parts. You have at the top of the screen, you have uh, probably a picture or car- carousel of pictures of that product, and you have title. Then you have a uh, price. Then maybe shipping information, right, like um, a zip code where to ship and probably price is different and calculated based on that uh, and you know shipping price uh, then below that you probably have some other other UI elements like such as um, like quantity picker or something like that to increase or do you want to buy one one item or multiple then you might or might not have uh, a variation picker right meaning let's say you're buying some some clothing or something or uh, I don't know, pants, right? So, uh, like you, you might want to pick size or you buy in furniture, you might pick size and uh, color combinations. Uh, then below below that, usually you, you'll probably have like uh, reviews, a view or something like that with uh, at least uh, stars, number of stars and number of reviews. Uh, maybe a button to get to more details of those reviews or a preview of the most recent preview. Uh, review oh, then likely you'll also have a list of either like suggested items to buy along with that product or items um, uh, like related to that search or related to that item or maybe items from from the same um, uh, store 
So as you can see already, like there is a lot of moving parts there, and each one of those pieces is uh, likely very complex on its own, right? There is either complex computation or data needs to be fetched or refetched and, and uh, recomputed based on different uh, user input. Uh, and it, at the end of the day, the whole thing needs to be put together, right? So basically with the system design, uh, you, you could go for a naive approach and say, oh, okay, that's just going to be one view controller and it's going to do all of those things and I'll just break everything down into views and this view controller will ar orchestrate everything. Uh, but likely that that's not going to cut it. And again, and especially for a large organization, what they care about to hear on your uh, when when you design a system, they would want to know how would you scale that. And an iOS scale means how can you accommodate multiple developers and multiple teams working in one code base, uh, working on that one screen, right? And then basically your, 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 basically your best bet would be to take um, a more complex architecture or an actual architecture rather than a design patterns such as MVC to break down that screen into multiple components that can be put together um, to, 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 uh, to compose that one uh, product details screen. So basically one, the go-to I recommend uh, the go-to architecture for this I recommend is Viper. Uh, basically, the idea there is that you would break down your uh, product screen into multiple smaller components. Let's say uh, image carousel, right? That could be one component. Basically, it's a Viper stack on its own with its own interactor, router, uh, presenter, and the view to display the carousel. Um, then you would have price, likely is gonna be a complex component, so you might have one Viper stack for that. Then you could have another one for reviews, then another one for uh, related items, and so on, right? And then you need to put them all together, likely you'll have another Viper stack as a container for the entire product details screen. And then those respective, uh, th those, uh, Viper stacks will be children of that parent stack. And basically that way you will compose the entire screen, right? On the UI, on the view controller level, there, there would be those respective view controllers would be attached as um, child view controllers, but then you'll also have your setup of the interactors and presenters and everything else. That way, you don't have one overblown view controller or even one overblown interactor, right? If you just had one Viper stack for the whole thing, same problem remains, right? There's too much responsibility and logic in in small amount of, uh, small number of objects, right? So by breaking it down into multiple um, Viper stacks like that, you you help with that and then individual teams or individual developers can only work on one or several Viper stacks and not affect anyone else and any other parts of that code base, right, that composes that product screen. That's kind of what uh, the general idea of where you and how you would want to approach that particular problem, system design interview problem, right, designing a product screen in a, for an e-commerce app. Uh, but also other areas that that your interviewer, kind of other areas to focus on that your interviewer might ask you about could be uh, how would you structure your uh, UI layer of your application, right? And I kind of touched upon it, like in, in case of um, Viper, for example, you, you go in for UI for view controllers and you compose them on that level, like a normal uh, application would be, right? Or normal, quote unquote, normal, normal, typical MVC. But then they might ask you, well, how would you cache and store things, right? How's your persistence layer is implemented? Because for some apps, uh, caching things for offline uh, is important, right? Because they they want to they want their applications to still work even in offline mode. Then another thing they could ask you is how would you handle networking? Depending on the app, it could be very complex. And and in case of the of this e-commerce example, that's actually also um, a difficult thing because you might need to fetch a lot of different. Uh, data from different endpoints and different servers to to 
to display everything you need to display in that product details screen. It could be a lot of stuff. So you have several approaches there. And actually, this is something you want to, th those, those problems, those, those questions about specific uh, layers of your app, such as cache and net networking, right? You want to um, uh, ask your interviewer, like, what, what are the criteria? Where, where he or she wants to go with this? Is it important for our app? And is it an important feature and criteria so that, that we support offline? If not, maybe your caching is, should be lightweight. Uh, just have one source of truth, some sort of storage, but it would be in-memory storage. But if offline is very important, then go for some something more heavy-duty like core data or Realm. Same goes for networking. Depending on the how, uh, you might ask, how is our backend structured? What limitations do we have there? Do we have one unified uh, RESTful API or like one endpoint that gives you all the data back and then you just propagate it into those components? Or do we have several endpoints and you have to make one request and then another follow-up request and then another one for price, let's say, and so on, right? And then put it all together like that. Um, also, an Im important question there would be, do we want to, and that's more of a UX question, but it, but it will drive your system design. Do we want to display everything, all the data when it's all ready and done? Ba basically meaning, let's say you fetch data from three endpoints. Do we want to fetch from all three, wait for everything to finish, and then, and only then render the screen, right? With that new um, content. Or... Do we want to proactively, as we get pieces of data, regardless which one comes first, we want to display it right away in the respective part of the app, right? Or uh, part of the screen sp specifically. So again, right, based on that, based on what they say, uh, your, your constraints are and, and requirements, you might implement it differently. And same goes, and, and then another area they could focus on is business logic, right? Basically, where do you put all the useful work besides the view, uh, UI and storage and networking? So as I, as, I, as I talked about it, in case of Viper, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. You basically, you have a dedicated object in each Viper stack called Interactor. And that's where the business logic for coordin coordinating everything will go. But if you have an MVC app or MVVM app or coordinator design pattern type of application, your business logic might live somewhere else, right? Maybe, maybe in the presenter mostly, uh, maybe in view models. Uh, so again, depending on which architecture you pick for, for your solution. Another, another type of questions that rarely but sometimes comes up is uh, backend questions. And there are sort of two types of backend questions. Um, one could be purely backend. So basically your entire system design interview uh, is going to be not about even an iOS application, but they'll ask you, oh, how would you design a, a, maybe an Instagram app? But what they mean is how do you design the whole the, the backend system? So all the databases and servers and uh, load balancers and all of that so that you support the client apps such as iOS, Android, or web apps that connect to that whole system. It is very unlikely that you'll be asked that, but then it depends. Some large companies, they just don't care. They want to hire a generalist rather than an iOS developer. So they'll, even though you're applying for iOS position, they'll still ask you that. But in my experience, it's rare, and likely you, you'll be asked... Uh, iOS specific design, right? About iOS specific design. Uh, but be ready for that. Uh, there, uh, there is way more. If you Google about it, there is m most of the, uh, if not all, system design interview uh, articles and videos out there. They'll likely talk about that. They'll talk about how to design backend system because that's the most common common question for a system design interview. And again, but for iOS though. It, for iOS positions, it's going to be how do you design the mobile app, iOS app. But there is one backend specific question that actually might be related to uh, relevant for iOS developers. And uh, it's not necessarily, you know, it's not the 
expectation that you'll know that, but you might, and it give, would give you a lot of points. They could ask you, how would you design the backend API and maybe uh, like API and server for this app that you're building? You could talk through how you would, in case of those multiple endpoints that I talked about with this e-commerce uh, product screen, you could already have uh, multiple endpoints that you will query and uh, fetch data from and kind of put it all together locally, client-side, and maybe uh, merge data if necessary, and then and resolve all of that and have that business logic on the client-side and then you know do whatever the logic you need to do with it. Um, but then a better approach that you could have is to have a so-called backend for front-end. It's a proxy backend in between of your, your application and uh, every other API that your app consumes. It could be your company's API endpoints or third party. And essentially, you, you add this layer of abstraction. It's basically a little server or maybe a large server, depends on your scale, right? Uh, that um, your app talks only to that backend and it provides the API contract with your application. And then that backend, every time your app needs data, goes and requests other endpoints and other servers and other APIs uh, uh, to get the data for your app. And potentially it even massages it. But basically, again, in the case of this product screen, let's say we had to... Um, uh, uh, get data from three endpoints before. Now, with the backend for front end in between, we only make one request to get all the data for, for that product details screen. And then backend for front end goes and queries those three endpoints, puts all the data together, filters it, or, or does whatever necessary to make it uh, easily consumable by the client side iOS application and then returns back that one response with only the data needed. That way, the benefits of that is that you, if any, at any point in time, uh, all one of those third-party APIs or, or, or one of those three endpoints changes, it doesn't break your app. You don't have to update your iOS app and go through the whole App Store release cycle. You can resolve it on in between in that back end for front end layer. And but the disadvantage of that is that you um there is a delay, right? You you add this one more request in between, it will take time to uh to execute. This is this is a general approach, general idea for a system design interview, for iOS system design interview specifically. Uh so yeah I hope I hope you. I wish you luck on your interviews, and uh, um, I, I hope this helps you prep for it. And also, I'm actually working on a video course about system design interviews, where I walk through uh, an e-commerce app example, actually, and I show di diagrams of how it could be structured as a, as a Viper application, and all the necessary uh, storages and services, and 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 so on for that app and I'll, and then I also have example of a messenger app and an Instagram application. And I also give in that video course I give a brief overview of what Vi Viper is and what architecture you would want to pick and why. Uh so if you're interested it's still work in progress. Um I'm most of the videos are just first drafts, but I decided to to make it available for early adopters, especially you know for I think it would be useful for people who are interviewing right now. Check it out if you're interested. I'll put link in the show notes, uh, but you can find it at uh, iosinterviewguide.com/system-design-interview, and uh, use a promo code podcast that will give you a twenty five percent discount. Uh, so yeah, check it out. Let me know what you think. And again, good luck on your interview. And you, uh, that, that's it for today. You can reach reach us at hello at insideiosdev.com or tweet at us at insideiosdev. And uh, see you next time. Bye.